if you're coming by, you guys, middle of the hackathon and all. Um, maybe some of you guys have seen this already from uh, the other day. Forgive me. But uh, I'm going to talk about a project I've been working on for a while called Clovers. Um, and Clovers is uh, an Ethereum-based game. uses a novel proof-of-work algorithm to create uh, non-fungible tokens. Uh, first, a little bit about myself. My name is Billy. Uh, I do a lot of work with Cosmos Network. Previously done work with Aragon Black on the implementation of batch bonding curves, with Gnosis doing atomic arbitrage work on their decks, I'm the author of EIP-1633, the refungible token, and some fun hackathon projects, ENS Nifty and Meme Lords. Um, Clovers was built by myself and Ben Studio um, with help from Corey Levinson with CADCAD. Uh, it's been made possible support from the ECF, uh, Foundation, Uskultar, Baracol, uh, Pioneer Works, and L4. So I'm going to quickly go through uh, kind of a onboarding with uh, the game. You can maybe get sort of a sense of what the mechanics are like. Um, this is the sort of uh, landing learning tutorial page. And uh, you can click through and see that there's something called Clovers. And they can be generated right here in your browser. This is a Clover getting generated in real time. Nice job. You can make another one. Oops, if I can look at the screen a little better. And if you were to keep going, we'll make a third. So each of these Clovers get added to your basket. You can see this icon up here. And let's go ahead and see what happens next. Um, now let's say you found a symmetrical Clover. See this one is symmetrical on the line of x equals 0. It's even a smiley face. Uh, the symmetrical ones are rare. If you find one, you can claim a reward. So a reward, for example, in this situation would be 0.22 Clover coins, which equals roughly 6 cents right now. Uh, now you can look back at the asymmetrical Clovers that we found earlier. They're not symmetrical, but you can still collect or sell them. I'll get into why you might want to do that later. Uh, to keep or sell a Clover, first you need to register it. And once it's registered, it would appear on your profile. It would appear in the public feed where you can buy and sell them. It's kind of a marketplace. Uh, you can also go back to your garden. This is a, a version of what we were doing earlier, where Clovers are generated in real time. As you scroll, new Clovers are seeded and grown there. Um, and you can add them to your basket like we did before. Uh, you can also use a pig. Uh, so the pig is sort of like a truffle pig. It, it runs ahead and sniffs out these rare clovers on your behalf. And uh, it'll be running in the background. It's just a web worker. Uh, if you're familiar with cryptocurrencies, which you might be if you're here, it's kind of like a miner. So uh, if we were to just hop over to the garden really quick, I'll show you really quickly. These are new ones getting generated. You can think of this a little bit like uh, watching clouds go by. Uh, most of them are just sort of noise. Lightning might strike, and then you see the face of uh, Jesus Christ in the clouds. Like, maybe right here, there's a CryptoPunk. Uh, so you'd be able to sort of save it for later, or go ahead and sign in and register it on Ethereum. But I'm going to hop back and talk a little bit more about the background of the project and what's going on here. So um, Clovers use what I call proof of search. It's an alternative to proof of work. Later on. Um, and it actually utilizes a board game called Othello, uh, which is uh, a classic board game uh, that has some really unique properties that make it function very similar to uh, a hash function. So uh, Othello is nice in that it's a very simple game. The rules are very easy to model. You can verify games inside of the EVM. Uh, but it has a very, very large game tree. For this reason, it was used in a lot of early uh, AI search because you couldn't do brute force uh, look ahead to try to find the most optimal gameplay. And so you ended up having to sort of design heuristics to, to make intelligent play. Uh, it didn't take long for the best uh, computer to beat the best uh, human in this game. Uh, but the game continues for human to human tournaments a lot. Uh, and it's still uh, unsolved in that uh, there's no proof that the optimal play is, is possible or that white or black has the best moves. It's been like a weakly proven but not strongly because the game tree is again just just way too large. Uh, so this has a nice uh, quality for using it as a hash function because uh, you can use the moves of the game that move all the way to the final end state uh, and due to the nature of the way the board works every time you make a move uh, the board is, is very drastically changed. It's very difficult to tell what was actually changed at each move especially when you run it backwards. 
So uh, it's sort of this one directional trapdoor function where you have the kind of public key at the end, uh, but or like you know the result of a hash, but you have no idea what steps it took to get there, what what uh, input seed it took, uh, and so. I put little squigglies here because this is like a public key, and the moves that it take written here in chess notation are like the private key, not quite the same, but um, kind of get the picture. Uh, what's also really nice is that in the bottom left, you can see this is the uh, board encoded uh, as a uh, hex value, and this can be used as the NFT ID. Uh, so these NFTs are nice uh, because they're sort of interoperable across the system. They immediately show up in your wallet. They can be bought and sold on OpenSea. They have all the sort of properties that are nice about NFTs to begin with. Um, inside this game, when you get these rewards, uh, I mentioned that they're based on this symmetry, but there's actually five types of symmetry. We saw this uh, vertical one here in the demo. It can be horizontal, it can be rotational, like here in the middle, diagonal, and uh, diagonal the other way. Uh, you also notice that there's different colors here. So uh, black background means that the, the like black player had more tiles at the end, which made them the winner of that game. Uh, white background is the opposite. Gray background means there's a tie. That's sort of like a disket. Uh, and there's also the possibility of having green squares. So this is when a game ends early. This was a shutout game between black and white. Black won, so the background is black. But there's all these empty green squares on the tile left. Um, so I mentioned before that there's that payout. There's that reward for the example one six cents. Uh, that comes from a bonding curve. So uh, a big part of this project was being able to offer my users an offboarding for whatever the shitcoin I just handed them for their activity. And so uh, I realized early on that one of the great ways to do this are these automated market makers uh, available around the ecosystem, things like Uniswap. We're using a Bancor implementation of a bonding curve because the, the minting of the coin is actually attached to the market maker. And you'd rather use Uniswap if there's a, a separate source of the coin. And so it's currently backed by uh, around eight or nine thousand dollars of ether, uh, backing the entire sort of population of clovers. It's very, very um, highly collateralized, so there's very little slippage in this system. Um, and we wanted to do that because uh, we didn't want to make this a game about prospecting. We just wanted to be able to provide a payout for users who are actually earning these. Uh, of course, if you have an inflationary token, how do you maintain value in that? Um, there is a very complicated but maybe easy seeming scheme in which uh, there are token sinks to counteract the inflation from minting rewards. Uh, so if we were to break down this map a little bit, you can see there's a few different characters and settings, the player, the garden, the pig, and the miner. Player is you, it's the person, it might use the pig, it might use the garden to find clovers, uh, might take rewards for finding symmetrical clovers, or it might take the risk on uh, actually buying a clover and not um, trading it for the reward. Um, I'll get a little bit more on why somebody might do that in a second, but the garden you remember earlier is sort of the space to generate clover slowly. It's where you do it kind of like cloud watching and have the, uh, the act of pareidolia, looking for shapes inside this noise, like uh, pattern recognition. Uh, the pig was that helper who just looks through all of the clovers really quickly and throws away everything that's not symmetrical. Uh, it's helping you find the ones that have kind of cash in hand payouts. And then there's the miner who you can think of as a kind of user or a player who's only interested in cash in hand payouts. They would maybe use the pig or maybe they would build their own mining system to sort of accelerate the process and be able to, to search through these more efficiently. So the whole system sort of accommodates for these different types of users and things that they might do. Um, so that first story would be the player sort of just liking the way uh, one of these things look. You know, this is kind of the basic idea of why you would play with CryptoKitties. You just think it's cute or you think it looks good. Uh, if you were to decide that and decided to keep it, you would burn some of this ecosystem token called Clover Coin, and that would help offset the inflation for the rewards that other people get. You would keep your Clover and go on your merry way. Uh, another story might be a player who is interested in making money with this system, but maybe they don't want to do it just from mining like the miner. Uh, so they might find an interesting image, uh, an interesting clover in this field, and see a lot of potential in it. Maybe it um, looks like their pet. I'll show you some examples in a little bit of some of the exciting asymmetrical ones. You might get an example of why somebody might get excited about the way these look. Um, they could keep the clover, similar to the first scenario, by burning some token. 
And then they might add some contextual value to it, like uh, naming it, identifying the fact that it looks like Sasquatch or the Loch Ness Monster. Uh, they might add comments to it. Other people would do it as well. There's also albums where you can sort of group them together. There's a lot of um, animal-looking clovers that end up coming up. There's a lot of clovers that have, looks like uh, numbers or letters. So you have this sort of weird meta challenges of trying to find all of the ones that include the entire English alphabet or so. Um, and then you can put it back on that marketplace where you might have the option to sell it uh, to somebody else who uh, realizes that they want to complete their collection of all of the letters or all of the dog-looking ones, and so they would be willing to pay, and in that point, that player would have made a profit without having to use the miner. Um, and then that brings us to the third scenario, which is the actual miner, who might just throw tons of hardware at it, searching for all of these super, super symmetrical ones, uh, or maybe they design their own clover that they want to find. They've put in you know, a perfect mandala or something like that, and they set their miner to search for specifically that one. They can cash it out, uh, and when they cash it out and accept that inflated reward token, the clover still exists. It just becomes orphaned. It gets owned by the contract itself and then um, goes for sale on the market. So if another user comes along one day in the future, decides they buy it, they could purchase it from the market, and if it's being sold from the contract itself, that fee that they pay is burned. So the goal is to have these token sinks sort of counterbalance this inflation reward. And if that works out, you have this happy balanced world. Um, so we launched in August and it was really exciting. We've had a lot more activity than I expected. Um, 5,000 transactions was on the first day, over 20,000 in the first five days. Uh, Dapper Labs, who has a wallet that subsidizes gas costs, paid $3,000 in fees on the first day from all the users using it. There was 20,000 new clovers in the first three weeks. Uh, there's currently almost 500 clover holders and a little over 40,000 clovers in circulation. Um, there's 33,000 clovers and clover coins in circulation. This is the sort of economy that's running. Um, the current token price is about 26 cents. Uh, from the inflation from the beginning, there's been a drop of 11 cents. This is sort of uh, planned on and incorporated in the way that the, the rollout would work. Uh, we did a lot of work with some software called CAD-CAD, which is uh, simulation software for state machines uh, to sort of see, okay, let's assume that the worst case scenario happens. It's just people showing up and mining and trying to pull money out of this contract because they know they can make a quick buck. How many clovers can we get generated at what different parameters? And so uh, we started running these simulations uh, with the idea that it would only, only go down and we've had much better results than, than what we've seen. We sort of expected that all $10,000 that originally went into the bonding curve would be depleted. Sure. Uh, would be depleted with only 20,000 clovers getting generated. And we've already seen twice that number and the, uh, the token price is still far from being zero. Uh, we've had three contract upgrades, a couple hacks, all of them rather benign and uh, friendly. Uh, four podcasts, we have a Telegram group that's growing, a Discord that was created by a community member that's also over 100. We have a very long average user session. It's over 10 minutes on average, uh, which for most websites is, is really great. Uh, we also have some traction on OpenSea. Uh, because we have our own marketplace, a lot of the activity happens on our marketplace, but if people want to use OpenSea, it's obviously an option. Uh, the average price for a Clover on OpenSea is 0.1 Ether. We've added some new features, and since launch, we've received one new grant, uh, as well as a meme. <laughs> I think maybe multiple memes, but this is one of our favorites. The pig is running. It's getting asymmetricals, but thank God sometimes it celebrates with a symmetrical one. Um, so here's some of the exciting symmetrical clovers that have come up. We have uh, Deutsche Bank logo, uh, some weird sort of uh, acorn. I'm really into these sort of rotational ones, and it's been really exciting to see the conversations in the Discord to see what users think are rarer, more desirable, and uh, how that correlates to what the contract is able to pay out. So uh, the rewards are auto-adjusting. If a lot of uh, diagonal symmetricals come out, they start getting less and less valuable, whereas uh, the perpendicular ones are a little bit more rare, so they maintain a higher payout, and the uh, rotational ones even more so. Clovers that have multiple lines of symmetry end up having, you know, two, three, or four, two, three, or five times as much of a payout. So you can see in this middle right is a clover that has all five lines of symmetry, rotational, perpendicular both ways, diagonal both ways, plus some green squares. So that was a really exciting one. Um, obviously a, a beautiful B, the bottom left. 
Um, some of the asymmetrical ones that I thought were cool. Top left, this is uh, supposed to be a turtle. Next one is spy versus spy. Obviously a weird face. Uh, we have kind of a dressage horse. Uh, the next one's supposed to be a unicorn kitty. Middle left is a dog with floppy ears. And you have a cell phone selfie stick, a cat. Uh, the one with the green is, uh, I think, looks a lot like a skydiving turtle. Um, the one next to that is kind of the Loch Ness Monster that's coming in and out of the water. Uh, baby lamb jumping, cigarettes, high heels, weird dude. Bottom right's kind of like a Mario character playing golf. Um, so upcoming, we're excited to start using a bounty system where people actually can design the clovers they want and put up rewards for them. Uh, we've been talking about using a dollar auction system, which if you're familiar with is kind of like a diabolical uh, way to convince people to pay more money for something that's not worth what it is. But uh, I think it, it starts becoming useful if you use it with more people than one. So the dollar auction, it's like I put a dollar for sale and you can buy it from me for 10 cents, but somebody else can bid 11 cents and they can go up. But the, uh, the hook, line, and sinker is that whatever you bid, you have to pay whether you win it or not. Uh, and so you get up to the fringe of a dollar and you might be willing to pay a dollar at that point just to recover the dollar you were already spending. The other person would pay a dollar and one just to recover that 99 cents they were already spending. But if you make it into a bounty system, then you have all these different people who are like, oh, I also want this clover that was bountied. I'd be willing to pay this amount. If it's the top amount, they're the ones who receive it. Somebody else is like, actually, I would like to say it. So they could pay some amount. If it's the top amount, they'll keep it. But that original person maintains the, uh, it's still part of the, the total balance. So the person who actually does find it is gonna get a much larger payout than if it was just from the single highest bidder. Um, Pre-sell mining, basically a way to remove risk from users who think there might be somebody who wants to buy their clover from them so they can uh, kind of register it on the blockchain without having to pay the cost to keep it. It kind of becomes like a, an orphan clover without a payout. Uh, and we're building a POA bridge for no-coin onboarding. So this will make it possible for people who have never owned Ether to come up to the site, start searching and finding clovers, earning Ether uh, by submitting meta transactions that go to the POA network, get verified, using their um, arbitrary message bridge to pay the gas costs on Ethereum that will then result in a uh, reward of Clover coin, which can be immediately transferred into Ether atomically so that a user could show up and just start trustlessly earning Ether without registering or doing anything like that. So really excited to sort of open up that onboarding to people who have never interacted with uh, Ethereum before because I think games are a great system for doing that and um, giving them a way that they can actually earn Clovers themselves or earn, earn the money that they need in order to interact with the rest of the system is something that we're excited about looking at. So that's uh, Clovers Network. You can get a hold of us on all these great social channels. Uh, my name is Billy. I'll be here hacking on a terrible project. If you want to come talk to me about that or Clovers, I'd love to see you. Uh, I think there's also uh, the graph is giving out prizes. And something that I've been meaning to do for a while is, is implement the graph with Clovers Network. So if you're still looking for a project, one that has a good payout, I bet you could win it with building a graph using clovers. That's all. Thanks very much, you guys.